de congregationis de causis sanctorum consulto. Upon hearing the opinion of the congregation of the causes of saints with our apostolic authority, we grant that the venerable servant of God, Vladislav Bukovinsky, a constant apostle of the gospel and shepherd of the heart of Christ, in the future will be called blessed. His feast will be celebrated on the day of the 20th of June in areas in accordance with the rules established by law. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kazakh USSR, Karaganda, August of 1954. A Catholic priest, Vladislav Bukovinsky, was sent here by the Communist Commander's Office to forget his past life and start a new one. The 13 years, 5 months, and 2 days of his imprisonment did not change the mind of Father Vladislav. After finding work as a watchman at a construction site, he began his pastoral work again and gathered a small but brave community around himself. Monsignor Joseph Wirth is currently bishop and ordinary for the Catholics of Eastern Siberia and Greek Catholics in Russia. He was a central witness at the beatification process of Father Vladislav Bukovinsky because he met him as a child. I was born in 1952, and a few months later Stalin died, and gradually concentration camps began to open and release prisoners. The first priest who was released from the so-called Karlag was Father Vladislav Bukovinsky, and in that time we had in Karaganda, as in many other places, mass baptisms, so Father Bukovinsky baptized me at that time. The community of faithful was represented by mostly German and Polish deportees, located in Karaganda during the time of Stalin's repressions. Sister Anna Romanovna was 15 when she received her first sacraments from the hands of Father Vladislav. I was baptized with water, but not by a priest. I have never seen a church before. I was told that in Karaganda, Father Bukovinsky had been released from prison and that he was offering preparation for the sacraments at night in a different apartment every day. I found out the place and came to the apartment. I saw that it was real. A priest was preparing people for the sacraments. Preparation was about a week long and I took part in it. I was once again conditionally baptized. I confessed and received Holy Communion. I remember how he offered that I sit in a chair and waited very patiently until I said everything, because after each word I cried. I said one word and cried, and said another word and cried. He told me, tell me everything that you feel, because I am confessing you for the first time and perhaps for the last time. Who knows if you will ever see a priest again. One year after his arrival in Karaganda in 1955, Father received amnesty and got permission to return to his homeland of Poland. But instead of doing this, Father decided to offer his entire life to the service of Catholics in the USSR. A year after, he received Soviet citizenship in 1956. He quit his job and bought a house, which he transformed into a chapel. But it didn't last long. After one year, the Soviet authorities closed it. He was invited by different people, often from distant places. He was constantly observed and it was dangerous to stay in one place for a very long time. Every day he was in a different house. People decided in advance when and where they would host the Holy Mass and were very careful and the services were at night. In the year 1959, Father Vladislav was accused of illegally establishing a church and of spreading religious propaganda to children and young people. He was sentenced to three years of imprisonment, and after the penalty, he returned to his pastoral work. Father Bukowinski used to go to the cemetery to observe as people buried their dead, and if he saw that they were Catholics, he offered his services. But the people were very afraid because they had the fear of Stalin's time. Father Vladislav made eight missionary trips to the remote places of Kazakhstan and went to Tajikistan a few times as well. He also went three times to his homeland of Poland, where he met several times with Cardinal Wojtyła, who was very interested in his work in Kazakhstan. In 1974, on December the 3rd, Vladislav Bukowinski died. A big crowd of people came to attend his funeral. Seeing such a big gathering, random people would say that this Catholic priest 
was really a saintly man. Soon his tomb became a place of prayer and pilgrimage. Oji, a Karaganda. Today in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, Vladislav Bukovinsky, priest and pastor, persecuted for his faith, was proclaimed blessed. How much this man suffered, how much. In his life, he always showed great love for the weakest and neediest. His testimony appears to condense the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Pues